uh, I guess moving on to the, you know, we're going to head out maybe more east a little bit. Uh, go start with the NL Central. So this is definitely going to be interesting. I think division, div, uh, divisional race here. I think a lot of teams are, you know, kind of up and coming. There's some momentum. There's not like one uh, like monster team that's just taking over, right? Or similar to like what the Dodgers have been doing out there in the NL West. So um, let's start with the bottom here. I got. I'm going to go with the Brewers. Uh, you know, no Craig Council, no Craig Council, no. They're missing. They're, they're going to be missing their aces, or you know, one of them, Woodruff, looks like yeah, he he has right shoulder surgery, so he's going to be missing the season. Gordon Burns, he's gone. Um, Devin Williams, he's the standout closer. He's going to be missing some time. So, like that's that was kind of their whole mo. So, like I don't know how much Freddie Peralta can necessarily do. Like, I don't know, win all the games? No, right? So, obviously, I feel like they're going to be taking a little bit of a step back there. Hitting-wise, like, there's been... Th- th- last year was kind of some question marks here and there with regards to their hitting, but now even more so, um, I feel like there's just even more question marks. So, I don't... Yeah, they, I know they won the division last year, but the reasons why they won the division last year, they're just not there anymore, and I feel like their weaknesses of last year... They're going to be, you know, kind of standing out a little bit more here. So, yeah, I'm going to go Brewers last. You know, uh, if uh, Yelich like has a kind of a, you know, renaissance type of year, maybe that definitely, you know, pushes them over a little bit. But yeah, there's just a lot of question marks, I think, with the Brewers right now to, you know, kind of go into the season. Um, but then, yeah, like I was mentioning before, a lot of like young, up and coming teams. The next I got is the Pirates. So O'Neill Cruz, like he could have a breakout season, I think, this year. This this freakish athlete at shortstop, and you know he's got all the the potential to uh, to do so. And he doesn't necessarily even have to be the focal point, right? Uh, they got Brian Reynolds, they got Cabron Rays. You know, maybe he gets a little bit more power in his bat. Uh, Jack Sawinski as well. Like, there's a lot of talent there in the lineup. Um, you mix that with some. You know, some pitching that I think obviously can take a next step. You know, think about like Mitch, uh, uh, Mitch Keller. Uh, they also added what Mark, Martin Perez as well. And obviously, you know, the big name out there is uh, Paul Skennis, former number overall pick from this last year's draft. Throws a hundred. It just has the nasty stuff in the world. And then you also add vets like Michael Taylor at center field, and then Yasmani Grandal, um, who I think he's going to be kind of like a stopgap in a way to, or or someone to spell from uh, for Henry Davis, uh, who you know has all the potential in the world. I think the spring training he's betting like a thousand. Add in Aroldis Chapman to the bullpen. Like this is a pretty good, I think, balanced team. Obviously, the question marks is the pitching staff and can they match the level of production that the lineup does? But you know, I think that they'll be able to you know score enough runs here to kind of help with that. Uh, and then the pitching will kind of just you know be okay here and there. So. Um, next I got the Reds. Um, I think they built off kind of what they were doing last season. You know, last season they were, they were pretty hot. They were pretty hot. Uh, I think pretty much until the all-star break there, I think they were like in the number one in the, in the division there. And then they kind of just faltered. So, you know, we'll see if Hunter green becomes kind of the ACE that I think a lot of baseball fans want to see out of him. So, you know, he had like a four some odd ERA last season, kind of in the high fours. And, if he can get mid threes and kind of continue that production that he had in terms of like getting strikeouts and, uh, you know, getting whiffs, like I think this could potentially be like a nice breakout year for Hunter Green. And then that should definitely help propel the Reds here. Um, but yeah, their lineup, one of the best in baseball, honestly, <laughs> like it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Last year they had 11 players with 10 homers or more. Um, this team can hit, they can hit, you know, you got Spencer Steer, TJ Friedel, uh, Will Benson, Jonathan India, Matt McClain. So they're just not short on bats, just figuring out where to put them in the lineup. So really going to be very much dependent, I think, in terms of how they progress from here uh, is, is basically going to be due to their pitching staff. Uh, next, I got the Cardinals. Uh, you know, I know last season, I think we, we both predict them to finish like number one in this division, but they just sucked. Uh, injuries, they could not get out of their heads, didn't have the momentum. Uh, and now, Hey, look, they added, uh, revamped their pitching staff, uh, pretty much from the top bottom there. I think you know, adding a sunny gray, uh, getting back Lance Lynn, Steve, Steve Matz, uh, and Kyle Gibson too. 
that should definitely help bolster and eat innings for that Ross for their pitching staff there. Uh, Miles McCullis, like that's a pretty good, I think one of five there. So um, adding in a kind of a full year here with Jordan Walker, uh, one of the best young talents, I think in the game, along with some other, you know, decently young talents, uh, Nolan Gorman, Bars, Newt Bar, and then also, you know, really talented defensive player in Mason Wynn at shortstop. Um, and then, you know, it, whatever production they can get from Paul Goldschmidt, the vets, uh, Nolan Arenado, and Wilson Contreras, like that'll be great if they can just match like their normal average type of year. And I think if you add all those things, like this could be a very successful team here, bouncing back from, I think they won like 71 games last season. So, and then I got on top of this division, the Chicago Cubs, the Chicago Cubs in the North side here. Um, this is the one team I think that in a, uh, unequivocally, they got better. They got better. They carried, they got a lot. They are maintaining very much the same pieces that they had last season, you know, with Justin Steele, who was kind of like a front runner for the MVP for a while or the, the Cy Young for a while, adding in, you know, Shota Imanaga as well. Like that's a pretty good, and you know, potentially what we can get from him. That's potentially a really great, pitching staff, you know, adding in also, obviously, Kyle Ken, uh, Hendricks there, too. Um, and then their, their uh, lineup in general, uh, Cody Bellinger coming back, like, year two, we'll see what he can do, see if he uh, takes it to the next level. Uh, Suzuki, Swanson, like, some of the better players in their positions. And then uh, also the up-and-coming up star there, Pete Crow Armstrong, like, we'll see what type of production they can get out of him, too. But there's just a lot of great things to look forward to, I think, for the Cubs. Oh, and they also stole the manager, uh, Craig Council, from the Brewers. You know, I, I, part of me thinks like Craig Council, he kind of saw the writing of the wall was happening in the Brewers. And I don't know if he got like a, a whiff in the air of like, all right, we're going to, uh, our pitching staff's not going to be the same next year. So we're probably going to suck a little bit, you, you know. And then he was just like, all right, I got a better offer over there with the Cubs. Let me just go over there. They're on the rise. And, you know, Wrigley, uh, it's a great place to win, I feel like. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's my standings. I think I got for the NL Central here. Pat, what do you got? What do you think? Yeah, man, this is going to be out of all the divisions in the NL, the weakest one. I think just in terms of wins and losses. I think a lot of these teams are in the same ballpark as one another. I think any way you chalk it up would be acceptable to me, no matter how you rank order these teams, because they each have their pros and cons, but they don't really, you know set themselves apart from one another, in my opinion. But I guess I have um, the Reds, Cubs, Cardinals, Brewers, and Pirates in my my ranking order. Um, I like the Reds um, a lot because of what I think the rotation can be. When I looked at their one to five and down, um, you know, looking at Hunter Green taking that step, Nick Lodolo being back, you know, adding Nick Martinez from the Padres, who's just a solid veteran. Um, Andrew Abbott had a great, you know, rookie showing last year. I think he can, you know, kind of build on that. I was hoping for Brandon Williamson to be around, but he got injured. Um, Frankie Montes too. I think they added yeah. by and large they're they did add Montes. I'm I'm a little skeptical. I mean, I hope he stays healthy for as long as he can, but he has not yeah. pitched in the MLB for a little bit of time. I think I just liked their rotational depth more than any other team in this division. Um, I liked everything I saw from their rookie hitting last year. They are going to come in with some injuries with Matt McLean um, being out. He could miss the entire year uh, from what I've heard. I hope it's not that long. Um, and TJ Friedel is going to be out to start. But the thing I like about them is you can tell their stance and how they're going to go after this year. Like the second they heard McLean had that injury, they went out and acquired Santiago Espinal from the Blue Jays. It's like I can see them like understanding what their talent is and like trying to supplement it immediately. And it's it's going to be that kind of aggressive, you know, gameplay from them. That's going to keep them in it, but they have a lot of, you know, fun pieces around the diamond. Ellie De La Cruz, you mentioned a lot of the other guys. I mean, Jamer Candelario, they steal from the Cubs. Uh, Christian um, Encarnacio Strand is a big player to watch on first base. It's just, they have all these prospects. It's too bad. You know, Noel V. Marte got injured or sorry, got the PED suspension for half his year now. And Edwin Arroyo, um, one of their younger prospects got injured. Uh, he'll be out for the whole year too. So they've had some bad luck to start, but I still think they have enough talent there to get it done. Um, I, I won't talk about the Cubs. I think you covered them well. I think the Cardinals, the only thing I would say is they made a lot of starting pitching additions and that was their you know Achilles heel for sure last year. But then I look at the additions and I'm like, 
Sonny Gray is off injured and he's already coming in with a hamstring. Uh, Lance Lynn completely imploded last year. Kyle Gibson's been sitting at around a five ERA. You know, Matt's may start off in the bullpen. I'm just kind of like, these are all names and they're all names that I think we should all be able to like trust, but maybe they're just at that point in their career where it's like, things are going to kind of take that downswing and they've been dealing with some injuries on the offensive side too. So they're like out with, uh, you know, Tommy Edmond to start the year. Lars Newbar made start on the injured list. I'm like, I like these guys. I like these names, but I'm like, man, yeah. are they going to put it all together uh, in time to win baseball games? That's my only worry. Yeah. I and mean, yeah, they're all in their like thirties, uh, you know, borderline twilight of their pitching careers, basically with Sonny Gray and Lancelin. Lancelin, I think he's like 36 or something. So, and Kyle Gibson too, I think he's a similar age. So it's like, yeah, you're depending on them, you know, mid thirties people to basically uh, pitch under 50 innings plus now. And it's like, yeah, that, that definitely is a tall order, I think. So, um, but part of me is a little bit bullish, you know, see what they can get if they're able to uh, kind of swing that. But I do agree. I think that is going to be tight, at least for my, for me, for me, in my opinion, between two and three there probably. Um, but yeah, I just think that, yeah, maybe in this case, the Cardinals kind of edge it out. But I do agree, like this Reds team, like I would not be surprised if they do win the division or something just because they just, they have the talent. And it's like, yeah, you mentioned all the players that are hurt. Like, great. They got three other players that they can backfill that, you know, could potentially hit 10 plus homers there too. Yeah. It's like, oh no, we lost one like top prospect that is, you know, capable of hitting and, you know, having a OPS of like 700 plus, right? So uh, a lot of great things, I think, for Reds fans there. And, you know, we'll see if they are able to make like deadline deals and things like that um, going into, you know, potentially the playoffs here. Yeah. But of all the divisions, this is one of like my least certain calls on teams. So I, I could see this going any sort of way. Yeah, it's definitely a good, I think, betting division, right? Because it's like, all right, maybe I feel pretty strongly that this team could potentially win it. You know, looking at the odds here, let's say the Cubs are favorite, plus 185. Cardinals are second here, plus 190. Reds, 350. So, hey, that could be a really good, uh, I think, bet there, you know, to win the NL Central. Um, and then Brewers and then Pirates. So, um a little bit surprised, yeah. I think the, you know, at least for me, yeah. I, I maybe I'm not feeling too strong about the Brewers and their prospects this season, but um, yeah, you know that uh, Reds. I think at plus three fifty, like that could definitely be something to take there. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like the Cubs, like it's their division to lose at the moment. So 